Here at Peter's Market Garden near Verdon, Manitoba, just about everything is on a smaller scale than what you'd find on a typical prairie grain farm, except for the workload. It's late June and Marlon Peters and his wife Deb are in their fifth year of running things here. This year they have put in 12 acres of vegetables and Marlon says things have changed a great deal from when his parents started selling vegetables in the late 1970s. And uh, I think just out of opportunity, I had some excess vegetables one year and advertised and that's kind of how the whole thing was birthed. It was a sideline for them from grain farming. My mom uh, did a lot of it and us kids did, uh, did some work in there as well. So things kind of evolved from there. My brother and I ran it for a few years during uh, our university time. Peters told us they sell the majority of their production through the Verdon Farmers Market, which was co-founded by his parents over 20 years ago. As is the case in most farmers markets, customers are looking for variety. So we grow uh, root crops, potatoes, carrots, beets, onions. Uh, those would be the main ones that we've done there. We're just dabbling into garlic in the years to come probably. Uh, and then we do, like I said, sweet corn, cucumbers, uh, long cucumbers for slicing. But we also grow a lot for selling as dills uh, for pickling. Uh, fresh peas, uh, green and yellow beans. The Peters operation includes a pair of farm-built greenhouses, each just over 1,000 square feet. Right now, there's plenty of work to do here for their two employees. But as they get busier with harvest later in the year, more workers will be hired. One of the main benefits of having greenhouses is being able to extend the growing season for crops such as cucumbers and tomatoes. On a good year you might be uh, starting to pick some tomatoes out of your garden uh, somewhere along the way in August. And with this we're able to put our plants out, well we put uh, plants out that are 10 inches tall already middle of, uh, middle of May or early May I should say. And uh, on a good year, it looks like we could be almost uh, ready to start picking in July of this year, first week in July or maybe the second. So it, uh, you can shave off four to six weeks of the season by putting them in here. Because the tomato plants grow so quickly here in the greenhouse environment at this time of year, they prune and tie up the plants about once a week. It's important to, uh, to keep them growing upright. So that's what these little clips are for. We, uh, Put them about every six eight inches on the plant and uh, they clip around the strings and uh, glass grasp tightly onto there and then it supports the plant so it can grow upright uh, so that's one part of it and then uh, pruning is also really important to take the uh, center stem out from between the y of the of the main stem and the leaves so that uh, instead of the plant becoming a bush and putting all its energy into making more plant uh, it actually puts its energy into into making more fruit and growing the growing the fruit larger and quicker since they're only cropping 12 acres at the moment, there is no need for a large, expensive tractor. Instead, Peters uses an old 10-horsepower Alice Chalmers G, which was built somewhere between the late 1940s and mid-1950s. With the tillage, we've got a disc mount that cuts, uh, that angle cuts weeds right next to the row, so I'm able to, to drive within an inch or two of the, the planted crop and, uh, and remove weeds to to leave only an inch or two on either side of the plant for, for manual weeding. And uh, we've also uh, got a, a hiller mounted underneath so all of our potatoes get hilled using that as well, just drive, drive between each row and, and uh, throw dirt up on the plants. So that's a one, one pass operation. Because they grow their vegetables for paying customers, the Peters family are not happy about wildlife coming in and helping themselves. Marlon told us they have started putting up electric fence around most vulnerable crops, which has noticeably reduced their losses. There's lots of deer in the area, there's a creek just north of the yard, so they like to come and graze what we've got to, and uh, without fail they seem to find the peas right at the point when blossoms are set and pods are just forming, so uh, we do a little bit of preventative fencing. Uh, it's not a foolproof system, but it seems to have been effective so far, so uh, this, this time of year we do that with the peas. They had an unused house sitting on the yard, which they have since converted to an effective washing and packaging facility. Product comes off the field and it makes its way here and we'll uh, set up our wash station. It's nothing elaborate, but uh, everything gets sort of pre-soaked pre in, uh, in water trough. 
and depending how dirty it's coming off, uh, sometimes it'll just get an extra rinse from there, sometimes we'll uh, use pressure washer if we're fighting with mud. Uh, but we try to get our product, uh, our root, root crops at least, uh, clean and ready for market. Inside the building they have enough room to handle the packing of various vegetables. Often we have uh, tables set up down the middle and around the corner there with five or six sets of hands on them. Uh, taking the clean product, putting it in package, uh, tying them shut, putting them in trays, and then moving them into the cold storage here. The Peters family came across this old school bus about 15 or 20 years ago, and they've been using it to take their vegetables to the nearby Verdon Farmers Market ever since. Not only is it an effective transport vehicle, it also serves as their sales venue once they get there. We've got an awning that comes out on the side of it, so we set that up to keep our product in the shade and uh, pull the tables off the side of the bus. So we've got 16 feet of table there and we put our product out on display and the lineup forms and moves across the front and uh, works quite efficiently. In an effort to expand their business, they have started selling at the Brandon Farmers Market to the east and have also headed west to several grocery stores in Saskatchewan. But even as they increase production, they don't want to get so big that everything has to be mechanized. We want to stay small scale enough that that our customers sort of know that their product has been handpicked and not just come off of a mass production. And that's part of the appeal of, of the way we market as well, is that everything's locally grown, it's locally produced, and the concept of knowing your grower uh, is important to a lot of consumers these days. Peter's Market Garden has recently expanded into online sales. Anyone in Verdon who has to work during the day and doesn't have time to attend farmers markets can place their order online and have it delivered to their workplace. If this program proves to be popular, it may be expanded into surrounding communities in the near future.